Welcome to the Healthy Perspective Podcast with your host, chiropractor, entrepreneur, mentor, and author, Dr. Chris Bowman. He'll break down and extract the secret sauce behind his own success and the success of some of the top leaders in every category and from around the world. Get ready for your weekly mental adjustment because shift is going to happen. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Healthy Perspective Podcast. Today is going to be a fun one. We have Bethany McDaniel from Primarily Pure with us, and we have a super interesting story of, of how we met. My company was in its infancy. Her company was in its infancy, but that's not actually how we met. We met because of our infants. Um, <laughs> we had the same midwife, and our daughters were actually born on the same day, and our midwife was having to go back and forth between houses and uh, and she ended up getting chiropractic care. And so we have this our funny story that our kids are united from being born on the same day and the same midwife. Um, but I'm super stoked to see where she's at now with a super successful um, holistic cosmetics company and a day spa. And I'm sure a billion other things that we'll that we'll figure out. Um, Bethany, thanks. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Chris, thank you so much for having me on. Of what course. Crazy, the more I think about that, it's just like such a such an insane coincidence how all that worked out. Yeah, both first time babies, first time home birth, yeah. and it's like this is what we got to deal with, you know. <laughs> oh, oh man, so nice. But we did it. Our yep. kids are five we now, out. and they're healthy and <laughs> crazy. <It worked> out. <laughs> right. So back then, primarily pure was was just starting, right? You didn't have a baby line. You didn't have any of those things. Why don't you tell me um, maybe a little bit of history of how primarily pure was born? Um, where it is now and maybe your vision of where you want to take it in the future. Yeah. So I started Primarily Pure in 2015 and it was kind of the outcome of several years of me um, struggling with acne and different skin issues, mostly in junior high and high school, a little bit into college. And I always kind of felt like there had to be something more to it other than just using a harsh chemical cream or going on antibiotics. These are some of the things that my dermatologist had me doing at the time. Um, and I just, I was frustrated because none of it was a long-term solution. There were, they were always short, um, quick, like band-aid fix type things. And I always felt like there had to be something more to it, but didn't know how to figure that out or just didn't have access to the right information at the time. Mm -hmm. And over the next several years during college and shortly after college, some of those pieces started coming together for me. I started, um, you know, I learned about diet and the impact that that can have on the health of your skin and how most of the things that I had thought I knew about what we should be eating were wrong. And so I made a lot of changes there to my diet and I was really pleasantly surprised by how much better my skin looked and by how much better I felt as a whole. And so a light bulb kind of went off for me, like, okay, if I've been so wrong about what I've been eating and what I, the foods that I thought were healthy my whole life, like what else out there mm -hmm. is, have I been thinking about in the wrong way? And so I started diving into skincare products and, um, even like deodorant, personal care stuff. Deodorant was a big one for me that I was really surprised by when I started looking into just the ingredients that most conventional deodorants have and how harmful they can be. So I just kind of started blending my own stuff as a hobby and using it on myself. Really loved the products that I was making myself better than the stuff I'd been using mm -hmm. for most of my life. And I just kept talking about it. I kept telling, I was telling like all my friends and family what I was doing and just kind of talking about this journey I was on. And mm -hmm. little by little people were interested in what I was doing and in these products I was making and friends and family wanted to try them. And so I would, I started um, just on a really small scale, making a few extras every time for friends and family. And then um, before I knew it, they were wanting to reorder stuff. And so it kind of like started very slowly. My husband and his brothers and dad had started a farm at the time called Primal Pastures and that was kind of growing. So I started selling a few things on the farm's website and um, from there, things kind of started taking off. That was, yeah, that was in early 2015. And then gosh, like half the way, halfway through the year about, I started a website of my own 
primalypeer.com, moved everything over to that, um, and then rebranded my company shortly after that with new labels and, and all of that. And it just kind of took off from there. And then about a year, a little over a year into starting my business is when I had June. And um, once, once I was pregnant with her, I knew I wanted to move the business out of my home and into a space of its own. And that didn't happen until like right before she was born. Mm. Um, so that was kind of like a big gave me like the push that I needed to take some of those steps and hiring someone on full time and moving the business out of my house. And that was in 2016. And then from there, we've just really, really, the growth has, um, has progressed really quickly. We're in a new space now. Um, that's much bigger than the current one. We opened a spot our headquarters a few years ago and I have about, um, 35 people on my team now. So it's been, it's been quite a wild journey. <laughs> Yeah, that's incredible. And, you know, going that route where you're just like, I want something better for myself. You don't really think about like business training. You don't really think about like, you know, someone told you you're going to have 35 employees in a couple of years. You yeah. probably would have gone a different direction, you know, and, and this is actually a really cool direction that we can take this talk where a lot of people think you have to have everything figured out 10 years down the line before you make your first sell. Yeah. Now, you know what I mean? Like you made your first sell because you're passionate about what you're doing. You made your first sale because people thought you were crazy and probably wanted you to stop talking to them. So they just took one. Right. <laughs> and then like, this is actually amazing. Like it, it's working. And because yeah. you were passionate about the product and because you have a vision to, you know, liberate people from just being stuck with, um, you know, conventional cosmetics, people jumped onto that vision and joined together with you, not because the product was amazing. Yes, that's part of it, but because of what it could do for people in the future, they saw your transformation. And they're like, wow, if we could help the world have this transformation, you know, that's what, that's what it's about. And I'm sure going through all the different headaches and whatnot that you've gone through with growth and fast growth and, and whatnot, if you didn't have that vision and, and that we call it like our selfless purpose, something bigger than yourself, how easy would it have been just to be like, no, I'm just going to keep this local on the farm rather than go, you know, global and, and, you know, taking things as big as they are now. How How different would your company be if you would have thought about you know, just how can we make more money versus how can we, you know, help the world? Yeah, I, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because I, um, I always say like looking back, the, just how much I was hustling and really working harder, not smarter, which is, I know is the opposite of what mm -hmm. a lot of like, you know, business, business talk, mm -hmm. like will tell you to do. Um, I really see that as, as a blessing in a lot of ways, because I wasn't putting all this pressure on myself to hit like certain financial goals or anything like that. I was just doing like hustling and doing what I loved and doing what I was passionate about. So I feel, I feel pretty grateful for that mindset and that passion. And truly, I don't know how people build businesses around things that they're not passionate about, because for me, like the financial stuff is, is just not a big enough <laughs> motivator at the end of the day to, you know, to, for me to, to be doing what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. And, and people think, you know, the money from the business is what makes you happy when it's like the money is a reflection of the value that you're providing. But ultimately the, the reward is, is not necessarily the, the financials as much as it is like the testimonial from that 15 year old that was excited to go to prom or, you know, like something like yeah. that, or it's like my acne is gone or I don't have BO anymore, or, you know, I won't get cancer. I, you know, I, I feel better about not getting cancers or, you know, like things like that. Like I just the same thing in, in my profession. like, sure, we make a good income, but that money would not be worth anything if I didn't get somebody that had been to 13 doctors and couldn't figure out what was going on. And finally they come to my practice and they get results. It's like, man, that outweighs millions of dollars that I could bring in. Totally. Yeah. Um, there's value on it. And it, and it's so interesting too hearing, cause I, I didn't really know like the beginning of your story too. So we got married in 2015, my wife and I, and I started my practice. My wife was working. We got pregnant when we weren't trying, you know, like two or three months after we got married and I had to make my business successful because she quit her job. Like I didn't want her working and pregnant and you know, having to go back to work and put our kid in daycare or, you know, so it made me hustle, you know, and work harder because I, I knew I needed to, you know, take over that, that income. And it's interesting. That was kind of the same for you. It's like, okay, 
Like if this is going to be successful, it's not going to be dependent on me. Like I got to get other people around me. And I think so many new business owners go the opposite direction. And I don't know if that was just like intuitive or knowing that you didn't want to have a newborn and a business in your home at the same time. But so many people think that they have to put themselves on the pedestal of their business in order for it to be successful. When in the beginning that can be helpful for brand recognition or, you know, whatever, but in the end it's going to be your downfall because if you leave or you want to go do something else or you want to go bigger, it's, it's not possible. You know, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go big, go with people, you know? Um, so what's, what's kind of the next steps? I don't know if you thought about this or not for, for primarily pure, you got your day spa, like what, what are some sort of things that you have lined up for the future? Yeah, we, well, in the near future, the holidays are coming up. It's always a big time for us. So we have some limited edition holiday products that we'll be launching again last, or again this year, we had them available last year and they were a big hit. So I'm really excited about bringing those back. And then we are going to be offering, um, hopefully (laughs) we're going to be coming out with a line of sunscreen um, and just sun care products um, this summer. So I'd say those are kind of like the two big things on the horizon right now. Yeah, That's awesome. What, what is it like behind the scenes? Like, let's say you want to launch a sunscreen line. How long does that typically take from like conception of idea to like actually rolling out a product? What is the, what is that process like? Gosh, it, it varies so much from product to product. Like right when COVID hit, um, we, within a few weeks, we, we realized we had like all the ingredients necessary to make a hand sanitizer. And this is when there was kind of a shortage going on. Um, but we already had pretty much had all the ingredients to make one. And we had a formulator on staff and she just whipped up a formula super easily within like a week. And then, you know, we, we do everything in house. We manufacture in house, we label our products in house. Um, whereas most companies outsource all of that stuff. So it can take anywhere from like six months to, you know, a year and a half, sometimes two years to formulate something. Like if we really want to get something out, I mean, we can do it in like a week or two (laughs) at the very early, at the very quickest, but that's a hand sanitizer, which is very different than a product like sunscreen. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with the sun, with the sunscreens that we're working on, this has been, this has been in the works for, you know, since early this year and, and we're hoping to come out with them in summer of 2022. So that'll be, that'll be like an 18 month thing, most likely when all is said and done. Yeah, Um, that's awesome. And that totally depends. That shows discipline and vision too, you know, because it's like, man, I want to offer something because I mean, looking at, and I don't know how much you can say, but like looking at conventional sunscreens, there's a lot of things in there that do actually the opposite of what they're supposed to be doing for you, you know? And so if you can provide a product that not only helps protect against the bad stuff, but then also gives your body what it needs to fight, to fight back. You know, I mean, that's, that's awesome. Um, now looking at this company, looking at everything that you've done, what is some of the things that you get out of it? Like we call it your, your selfish why, you know, when you look back on all the work, all the hustle, all the sacrifice, what are some things that make it worth it for you? Yeah, I love this question. I jotted down a few different things when I was thinking about it and, um, you know, things like, I really like that I can take a break in the middle. Like if I, if I want to work from home, I can work from home for a day. And, Mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned to you before we started recording, like I'm doing some, um, hormonal testing today and can't have any caffeine and just felt kind of sluggish. So I was like working from home this morning until I came in to, um, to, to record this with you. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, when I'm home, I can, instead of taking a lunch break, I can take, I can use my lunch break to like hop in my sauna and then take a cold shower after. Um, My daughter had a field trip last week on Thursday. So I took the whole day off so I could go on that with her. So, um, you know, as I was thinking about all these things, I think like what it boils down to for me is just flexibility, having the ability to to do what I love and what I feel like I'm called to do. and, um, And also not feel like, it completely controls every aspect of my life to where I don't have any freedom, even though (laughs) as I say that I am also thinking like, you know, it's a big, it's a big weight that, that I carry. And I'm sure you can relate to this. Like 
in, in a lot of ways all the time, just kind of having the pressure of owning a business, um, you know, on your shoulders, at least I feel that to some degree all the time, but I also don't feel completely tied to, um, tied to it. Like every hour of the day, like if I really want to carve out time to do something else, I can do that. So I really appreciate, um, having that flexibility to be present for, um, my family and also to carve in some of the, these like health practices that are important to me throughout the day. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, and, and I love that it's more than just a material thing. You know, I, I love that. It's like true to your core values. It's like, I, I love that I get to do what I want on my own terms. And I think that's every business owner's dream, you know, live the life on your own terms. And while there's a certain weight of owning a business, you know, there's also the freedom that, that comes along with it. So Bethany, I'm super proud of you. It's cool having this, you know, kind of like five or six year relationship and just seeing what you were to where you are now and where you're going to go in the future. And I'm stoked that, you know, we, we, I don't know if you know this, but we run a little regenerative farm on our property now too, as inspiration from primal pastures and and whatnot. So, um, yeah. So you guys are making a bigger difference than obviously just what you do with skincare and whatnot too. Thanks, Chris. Well, I feel the same way and um, just excited to to keep following along for everything that you have coming out in the future and uh, excited about your book, too. I yeah, can't wait I'm, to I'm stoked for it. It's going to change a lot of lives and I'm excited to get it in people's hands. I'll send you a signed one for sure. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. Cool. Well, where can people find out more about you? Um, where can people buy your products? And then we'll put this in the show notes, too, but why don't just so people can hear. Cool. Yeah, our website is primallypure.com, P-R-I-M-A-L-L-Y, pure.com. And on on Instagram, we are at primallypure. Awesome. Well, that's super easy. We'll go ahead and give Primally Pure a follow. They are awesome. We use their products here in our house, and, and we, we love them. We wouldn't use anyone else. And so we're thankful for the work that you've put into these products to make our bodies clean and smell clean and look clean <laughs> and, um, and be pure. So appreciate it, Bethany. Chris. Thank you for listening to the Healthy Perspective Podcast. To connect with Dr. Bowman, follow him on Instagram at Dr. Chris Bowman. Until next time, make shift happen.